Hello everyone, I'm Deveshwar and in this presentation, I'll be talking about Siren, which is a math library for secure RNN inference. This is a joint work with my colleagues at Microsoft Research India. So let's begin. Consider we have two parties, a server with a machine learning model and a client with some input data. The parties want to perform inference, that is, they want to learn the output of the model on the input data. This should be straightforward, however, the model and the data they are dealing with is sensitive and thus cannot be disclosed. This leads us to the problem of secure inference which seeks to answer how these parties can perform inference without revealing anything about their sensitive inputs. Secure inference is a particular instance of MPC in the two-party context. In MPC, there are two or more parties which have some private inputs and they want to compute a public function f. MPC lays out a series of interactions between these parties and provide a mathematical guarantee that at the end of these interactions, parties only learn the output. Moreover, MPC is complete, that is, any function can be securely computed. Thus, we can do secure inference using MPC, in particular using two-party computation or 2PC. Our focus is on secure inference of deep neural networks, which have two types, CNNs that work on fixed size input and RNNs that work on sequential data and can handle arbitrary input lengths. CNNs are feed-forward networks, while RNNs feed results back into the network. In the context of secure inference, there are many works that focus on CNNs, and many popular CNNs like ResNet50 have been securely evaluated. However, RNNs have received little to no attention from the secure inference community. RNNs are the state-of-the-art when dealing with sequential and time series data, and here are some of its applications. First, RNNs are used to analyze DNA sequences. Second, they are widely used in speech recognition. And third, they have also been used in sports training to analyze the performance of athletes. All of these applications work on sensitive data and realizing them securely requires secure RNN inference. Now, let's see what are the challenges in performing secure RNN inference. First, RNNs use floating point arithmetic which is inefficient to implement securely using existing techniques. Fortunately, we have automated float to fixed converters for this problem, which convert floating point code to fixed point code that is much more tractable. However, we still have two major challenges in running the fixed point code security. The first challenge is that RNNs use math functions like exponentiation, sigmoid, tan h, and reciprocal of square root. Although there are existing solutions for some of these functions, they are either imprecise, thus their applicability is unclear, or they have huge performance overhead. The second challenge is that the output fixed point code uses a mix of different bit widths. All prior works use a single bit width uniformly for all the values, and as a result, they pay the cost of the largest bit width everywhere. For example, in the networks we evaluate, there is a mix of 8, 16, and 32 as bit widths which is replaced by 64 everywhere if uniform bit width is used. Since the performance of all secure operations degrade at least linearly with bit widths, this leads to inefficient solutions. To address these challenges, we have created Siren, which is a library for semi-honest secure inference. Siren provides support for mixed bit width arithmetic, which is enabled by our new two PC protocols for the required building blocks. Siren also supports math functions used in RNNs, in particular, we have developed new math implementations that are efficient to realize securely using our two PC building blocks. Additionally, our math functionalities are provably precise, which is why Siren suffers no loss in inference accuracy. Thanks to our math implementations and efficient building blocks, Siren achieves two orders of magnitude improvement over prior works. Finally, with Siren, we are the first ones to securely evaluate an RNN on speech data and perform head detection on images. Now, consider this figure which shows the hierarchy of the different components we deal with. At the top level, we have RNNs that use basic arithmetic layers like MathML, as well as math function layers such as sigmoid, tan edge, and L2 normalization. The math function layers in turn rely on exponentiation, reciprocal, and reciprocal of square root. Finally, at the bottom level, we have our building blocks for mixed bit width arithmetic that are used by all the layers. In the rest of this talk, we'll go bottom up, starting with the building blocks at the bottom level, and then 
We'll sequentially go over each level on the more interesting right branch of this hierarchy. Our first building block is zero extension, which simply increases the bit width of the input integer without changing its value. For example, here a 4-bit integer is extended to an 8-bit integer by prepending four zeros. Next, we have logical right shift, which takes a shift amount s as input and does the following. It shifts the bits of the input integer to the right by s places and in the process discards the lower s bits. To maintain the same bit width, it also puts 0 in the upper s bits. We have another variant of truncation called truncate reduce, which is more commonly used. It does exactly what logical right shift does, except it also reduces the bit width by shift amount. Then we have an operator that multiplies operands of unequal bit widths. This operator has an additional parameter L, which denotes the output bit width. For instance, here we have a multiplication between a 3-bit and a 4-bit integer, and the output is stored in 6 bits. Finally, we have digit decomposition, which simply takes an L-bit integer and splits it into blocks of D bits each. For extension, truncation, and multiplication, we also have signed variants, which take signed integers as input. In the paper, we show how to reduce signed operations to unsigned operations at no additional cost. Here is a comparison between the communication of our two PC building blocks with the best baselines possible through existing techniques. From communication, I mean the total amount of data transferred between the parties during the secure computation. We focus on communication improvements here because for our protocols as well as these baselines, communication dictates the performance. Moreover, the computations we are dealing with are wide enough that rounds of communication are easily amortized. For extension and digit decomposition, garbled circuits is the baseline and we are around six times better in both cases. For right shift and truncate reduce, the baseline is the right shift protocol from CRIFLOW2. For computing right shifts, we are better than this baseline by up to two times and our improvements are much larger for truncate reduce, which we use more frequently throughout Siren. Finally, we have multiplication, the baseline for which is to first extend the operands to the output bit width and then multiply them by the standard approach of using Beaver triples. We have a new protocol for multiplication, which is up to two times better than this baseline. On top of the improvements I just showed, we have an additional optimization, which can be used if the most significant bit of the input is known. This is great as we designed our math functionalities in such a way that we always know the MSB from domain knowledge. Here are the updated improvements when this optimization is used. Extensions become very cheap. The right shifts become almost as cheap as truncate reduce in most cases, and our improvements grow up to five times for multiplication. Now we are done with the bottom level and we move on to the next level. But before we get into the details of our math functionalities, we first discuss some background on fixed point representation that would be pertinent in the next slide. Specifically, a floating point value x can be converted to a fixed point integer with scale s by multiplying it with 2 to the power s and dropping the fractional part of the multiplication output. Note that using a larger scale s in this conversion leads to a more precise fixed point representation. For example, here we have the constant pi represented with three different scales, and it can be seen that the error is inversely proportional to scale. Since different parts of the computation require different precision, the scales vary, and in order to use minimal bit widths, the bit widths also vary accordingly. Now that we know what fixed point integers and their scales are, let's look at our math implementations, which are inspired by embedded systems. In particular, we also use lookup tables to avoid performing complex operations, and we use low bit width fixed point arithmetic, which is used in embedded systems to reduce memory consumption. The first functionality we look at is that for exponentiation, which is defined as e to the power minus x, where x is always positive. The idea here is to split x into x size of smaller bit widths, compute exponentiation on smaller x size, and then multiply these results to get e to the power minus x. To understand the specifics, let's see a concrete toy example. Let's say we have an 8-bit input with scale 4, and we want a 10-bit output with scale 6. We start with our input x, the fixed point integer 27, with scale 4 and real value 1.6875. First, 
we use rigid decomposition to split x into two four bit chunks x0 and x1 note that the scale of x1 is 0 and the scale of x0 is 4 next x0 and x1 are fed into lookup tables that exponentiate their real values and then convert the results to fixed point integers with scale 6 and bit width 8 splitting x into x size here has the advantage that much smaller lookup tables can be used which is important as the cost of lookup tables grow exponentially with the input bit width. Next, the outputs from the lookup tables are multiplied in 14 bits to get a fixed point integer g0 which represents e to the power minus x but with scale 12. Since the output scale is 6, we truncate reduce g0 by 6 bits to get h which has scale 6 and bit the bit width is 8. Finally, to get a 10 bit output, we perform an extension. Since we know that e to the power minus x always lies in 0 to 1, we have set up the bit widths in this computation in such a way that the MSP of fi, gi and h are publicly known to be always 0. Thus, our MSP optimization from before is applicable here. In this example, we had an 8 bit input. For cases with larger bit widths, this functionality straightforwardly generalizes to more than two chunks. After exponentiation, we have reciprocal and reciprocal of square root, which we evaluate with the following strategy. First, we use a lookup table to get an initial approximation of the output. And then we use Goldschmidt iterations to iteratively improve upon that approximation. Here we again extensively use mixed bit widths, varying scales and ensure that MSBs of all the intermediates are known. Moving on to the next level, we have sigmoid tan h and L2 normalization. They are easy to implement given our building blocks and functionalities for exponentiation reciprocal and reciprocal square root, as is evident from their formulas. We verified the correctness of all our math functionalities through exhaustive enumeration, which is basically checking the output on all possible inputs and is tractable for the bit widths used in ML. We found that our functionalities are precise having at most 4 help error, which means that their output is contaminated in at most 2 bits. Now, we move on to the evaluation of our system, which was performed on two servers with commodity hardware in a LAN setting. This table shows our comparison with prior works for securely evaluating 10 to the power 5 sigmoid instances. Minion used a 12-piece linear spline to evaluate their benchmarks, which we found has large help errors, to achieve comparable precision to Siren, Minion's recipe would instead require 48 pieces, which makes it 115 times slower than Siren. The other two works, namely Deep Secure and Empty Speeds, are also at least 80 times slower. Thus, evaluating Sigmoid using Siren is precise and 80 to 115 times faster than prior works. In the paper, we have performed many other comparisons against prior works with similar improvements that I don't have the time to discuss here. For a more comprehensive comparison, please refer the paper. Now, let's look at the new benchmarks we evaluated. First, we have the Google 30 benchmark, which evaluates an RNN for keyword spotting trained on the Google 30 dataset. It takes speech data as input and identifies simple commands like yes or no, digits, and directions from the speech data. It has 99 layers for both sigmoid and tanage, which have 100 instances each. The table shows that using Siren, a single inference on this RNN takes around 50 seconds and half a GB of communication. Batched inference, on the other hand, has much better performance as costs are amortized, taking just 1.1 seconds per inference. And as alluded to earlier, this benchmark is the first secure evaluation of RNN on speech data. Next, we have the heads benchmark, which evaluates a state-of-the-art network combining CNNs and RNNs. The task of this network is to identify human heads in an image. It contains 3 million sigmoid and tanage calls, which is 3 orders of magnitude more than the benchmarks considered in prior works. These calls are distributed across 136 layers, with some layers containing 72,000 instances. This network also has 3 L2 norm layers, containing up to 1200 instances of reciprocal square root. It takes us just 7 minutes and 85.5 GB of communication to evaluate this huge neural network. Lastly, we observed that around half the time in this network is spent on sigmoid and tanage, despite our large improvements. 
This clearly signifies the importance of having efficient implementations for math functions. In conclusion, we created a new math library for secure inference that is two orders of magnitude faster than prior work. It has support for mixed bit width arithmetic and the corresponding two PC building blocks are of independent interest. Our math implementations are efficient and provably precise and can be used in non-RNN contexts. Our code is publicly available on GitHub and I hope you enjoy reading our paper. Thank you for your attention.